My next question is, uh, Chairman Turner, is it true there's an exception in this bill for members of Congress? Right. So there is a section, there are actually several sections that came about as a result of the Donald Trump abuses that relate to political abuses of the process. There are not exceptions, there are notification requirements with respect to Congress, both if there's an individual that is significant to a, um, a political campaign, including a presidential campaign, some of those are, are, are processes that we're putting in place now, um, and some relate to the court itself. Because of the concern of what came out of the, the Donald Trump uh, campaign abuses, those notifications would give us the ability to, to ferret out political biases. Was, was your member, was a member of your committee somehow involved in a uh, inappropriate FISA targeting or search? Yes. Uh, and so is that why you created an exception for members of Congress or special yeah. treatment for members of Congress? Yeah. I don't want to call it an exception. Yeah, there, there is an exception. There's a notification requirement. Um, and um, the uh, Darren LaHood uh, made public uh, that he had been subject to inappropriate query. Uh, he was part of the process for drafting uh, these reforms and, um, and absolutely, even though he was subject to an inappropriate query, um, is, is adamantly opposed to the application of a warrant to search um, foreigners' data, uh, such as we've been describing. Well, of course, he wouldn't have any objection to it now that he's got an exception. No, there's no exception. Well, now that he gets special notification. That, that there's, there's no exception. Is there a notification? There's a notification to Congress so that we have the ability to oversight. So oversight. wouldn't it, uh, why wouldn't every American get a notification? It, it's not a notification to the individual. It's a notification to Congress for our ability for oversight for political bias arising out of the Donald Trump case. What allowed them, in part, to do the Donald Trump abuses, which again were, were seeking a probable cause warrant, was the fact that they had secrecy and we didn't have the ability to have oversight. We want the ability to have oversight when we believe there's political biases. I just, I, I think the American people would be a little concerned if they knew that there was a notification exception for a member of Congress that didn't apply to regular citizens. It is notification to Congress, not to the individual. Well, why not notify you if uh, uh, somebody's running for school board and they're being searched? There, actually, um, Elise Stefanik has been a leader in this. There are, there are provisions that are currently going into effect this year that relate to political candidates also all coming out of the ability to try to prevent the type of abuses that we saw in the Donald Trump campaign because absolutely we saw the the worst of the intelligence community, and I think the worst of the FBI, and it is absolutely imperative in these reforms uh, that we make certain that, that we reform them so that can never happen again. And that's what we're doing in the FISA court reform. Well, I'm glad it's, it's happening for presidential candidates. Does the campaign get notified? Uh, we do not have a requirement for the, for the campaign to be notified. We have a requirement for Congress to be able to have the oversight as to what they're doing. So as long as the campaign stays on the good side of Congress, they might be okay. It is bipartisan notification. Um, to by, every member of by, Congress? And, well, and by will I be notified? Um, it depends on what your role is. I, I, you know, in judiciary, you, you very well could be in a, in a role where you are notified. Will I be? I, I don't know. I don't know uh, how uh, judiciary committees would be handling those notifications. Will every member of Congress be notified? No, every member of Congress will not be notified. So it'll be like a few chairmen that get to know if a presidential campaign's being spied on? Well, and that's not in this law. That's under current law. Under current law, there are increased notification requirements and limitations as to what they're able to do. Under this law, which absolutely needs to be passed, we have massive reforms that would prevent them to be able to do the, the abuses of Donald Trump in the FISA court. Okay, I started asking about the member of Congress and you went to Donald Trump. I wanna go back to the member of Congress. Who gets notified? First of all, 
I take, a, I, I take objection with the fact that members of Congress get treated specially in this law over regular citizens. I think we all deserve protection under the Constitution. Um, so I think it, I find it really interesting. We've carved out an exemption for members of Congress, but I'm supposed to be comforted by the fact that just a few chairmen will find out. Is that true? Like who gets, if a member of Congress is uh, targeted under FISA, who gets notified? I want to be clear, I'm not taken up for members of Congress. I just want to know how this works. What special, what special treatment do members of Congress again, get in this no, FISA bill? There are no special treatments. So let me, let me again go back to this is a notification requirement rising out of the abuses with respect to the Donald Trump campaign so that we can ferret out political bias. Uh, now, the exact provision, because this is, is, is not in the, um, in, in the areas in which, I mean, there, we're in agreement up here on the four of us on the provisions that are currently in this bill. Um, but um, the, the notifications include uh, both Congress and Senate, uh, the Gang of Eight, and um, the uh, uh, legal counsel for the committee indicates that the provision that's currently in the base bill, on which we're all in agreement with, does include the queried member getting notice. It, it includes who? It does include the queried member uh, receiving notice. What we need to do, because I, I don't have that in front of me, is we need to pull that provision for you and allow you to read it yourself so okay. you become comfortable with it. I think you described it differently earlier. Yes, my understanding was that they would not have gotten notice. Okay. I'm being told that, that they are. So if a member of Congress, let me get this straight, this is a little carve out for members of Congress. If a member of Congress is targeted, even fairly, legally, they get notified, but an American citizen does not. Is that correct? Well, again, as I told you, uh, the exact provision you're asking questions about, they're pulling it right now, and we'll make sure we give it to you so you have the exact answer. Because I, I obviously did not have uh, the, the accurate information in front of me when you asked the question. Well, let me, let me ask um, some of the other members. If, if, uh, do you know if there's an exception for members of Congress, uh, Chairman Jordan? The notification, uh, yeah, I understand the notification. But what's interesting in the, in, in the base language is the language is, uh, the language uh, would be the Gang of Eight and that particular member, as as uh, Chairman Turner just told you. I don't think, I don't think the, I don't think the Judiciary Committee gets notified like the Intel Committee would be notified. What is the Gang of Eight? That's House Leadership, Senate Leadership, and the, and the, and the Chairman and the Ranking Member of the Intelligence Committee. Does the Judiciary doesn't get notified? We don't get notified. Why wouldn't you notify the Judiciary Committee if 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 Congress is being spied on? I would not have an objection to that. The Judiciary Committee has not asked for that change in the base bill, but I would not have an objection. But, my, but let me go back to my original question. When you're able to answer it, is it true that, there, that if you're a member of Congress and you're being uh, searched in this database, if, if some member of the Intel Committee is searching for your identifiers in this database, you get notified, but if you're a citizen, one of the other 350 million people who aren't one of the 535 people that are in the House and the Senate, that you get no such notification. Yes, that's, a, that's accurate. Uh, again, I think underscoring what we've spent the bulk of our time here this afternoon, Mr. Massey, talking about is underscoring why you, you still need this fundamental warrant uh, concept, um, the, or the warrant amendment, excuse me. I think it does underscore the reason that we need an underlying uh, warrant requirement. I mean, I think it is wrong to tell members of Congress, and that'll, that'll help this bill pass, no doubt, like the overall bill, if there's no warrant in it. I, don't th I think it should be thrown in the garbage if there's no warrant in it. Uh, but for those people who might be inclined to agree with me because they're members of Congress and they're worried that they're going to get this backdoor search done on them and their privacy is going to be violated. There's a little wink and a nod. Don't worry, we got you covered on page, you know, 35, line two. That's for you. That's for you, Mr. Member of Congress. If you are going to be targeted in this database, if we're going to search 
for you or your house or your home address or anything like that or your phone number, we're going to notify you, but we're not going to do that for the rest of America. I think that's wrong. I don't think, I mean, obviously members of Congress are uncomfortable with renewing this authority, especially given that a member of Congress has, has been targeted using this system. Not targeted for information collection, targeted for searches of information that's already been scooped up, terabytes and millions of emails out there. I doubt they were looking for this member of Congress uh, because they thought he was cooperating with the head of Hamas. I mean, I, don't know, I can't know the reason they were in this database fishing around for a member of Congress, and I'm deeply uncomfortable with it because it gets to the balance of power in the government. We're, you know, when we reauthorize this without putting in the constitutional requirements, we are changing the balance of power. But oh, we got a little, we got a little hook here for us. 535, if you're one of the 535. Let me ask, does this ap apply to the non-voting delegates of, of Guam and Puerto Rico? Can your staff tell me? Because I said 535, maybe there's 541. I, I believe it would apply to all members. Yes, it would, it would apply to all members. Well, they're delegates, they're not voting members, but it applies to non-voting members. The intent, again, is an assumption that it is a politically motivated search and to stop political motivation of both, the, which we've clearly found in the FBI and have been incredibly troubled. P politically motivated search. So if, you, if you're a member of Congress, you'll be notified if you're the target of a politically motivated search. Oh, by the way, you can be one of the six non-voting delegates from Guam, Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, Washington, D.C., et cetera. But if you're not in that 430, that club of 435 plus 100 plus six extra who get to come along, they don't get to vote, but they get this special protection. Have I left anybody out? Presidential candidates get protected. Do they get notified? Again, it's a different, a different provision that, that's, that's not in this bill. I can send you the okay. provisions. Okay, so, so the new thing that's in this bill, the novel concept, is to give every senator and every U.S. rep sort of a special notification if they've been targeted. Is that true? To deter political bias. To deter political bias against an incumbent? Does it apply to campaigns? That is a provision that already is law that we have, that we have, have put in. I'll, I'll give you a copy of that. Elise Stefanik has been a leader in ensuring that, that campaigns also um, are, uh, are reviewed with this higher level of concern. Again, coming out of the Donald Trump does, campaign. Does a can does a it is not this bill. Does a congressman get uh, a candidate for Congress get notified if they're being targeted? Let's Donald say they're not an incumbent. That's right. Again, the, <clears throat> the you're using the term targeted, and people aren't targeted. Uh, Use whatever term foreign, you want, and then I'll ask the question again. Unless, unless they're a foreigner located abroad, those are the ones that are, are targeted. Um, but yes, this provision does relate to the issue of the political bias and attempting to eliminate what we saw with the Donald Trump campaign um, of political bias and what we saw, of course, in the, in the searches that have related to other members of Congress that appeared to have been politically biased. So a member of Congress gets notified if they're being queried in this database. Does, does somebody who's running for Congress get notified? Not under this provision. Well, isn't that special? Now, if you're an incumbent, you get protection. You get to know when the executive branch has decided to uh, politically target you, because as you said, we're assuming these are politically motivated targetings, if you're a member of Congress, but if you're running for Congress, correct me if I'm wrong, you don't get the same treatment in this bill that members of Congress get. Because I thought I found a loophole there for a second. Everybody should just go register to run for Congress. And it's only 500 bucks in Kentucky, and I got a lot of primary opponents that dis discovered that. But uh, maybe, they're, maybe they're filing, five, spending $500 and running against me because they think they're gonna get protected 
But it sounds like the reality is they're not going to get protected. The only people who have this special exemption in here to be notified if they're being queried in this database are sitting members of Congress, sitting senators and sitting U.S. representatives. I think that's a little bit troubling, and I think it was put in there so you could, we could pass this. I mean, who wants to vote to spy on themselves? I don't. But you get to vote. You get to vote on whether this bill becomes law. And, you know, as long as you stay in Congress, you're going to be fine. So that's what troubles me about this provision is it's put in there. And maybe you get 50 or 100 people who wouldn't have voted for it otherwise are now going to vote for it because they know they've got the pen. They got the congressional pen or the Senate pen. And that's the shield that says, ha, 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 if the FBI or NSA comes after me, I get to know about it. Nobody else does, but I get to know about it because of this bill. Well, of course, he wouldn't have any objection to it now that he's got an exception. No, there's no exception. Well, now that he gets special notification. That, that there's, there's no exception. That's 100% a lie. 